And as a result, uh, Dennis O'Rourke. Mr. Chairman, every government must ensure the safety and security of its people. That's basic. But a democratic government must also ensure that the principles of democracy, the right to privacy and the freedom of speech are also protected. Achieving those two objectives is at the core of the GSC, GS, GCSB legislation. New Zealand First comes to the consideration of the legislation with a constructive view. We know we are facing serious and challenging issues. Entrenched dogmatic party political positions won't help to frame suitable and necessary legislation in such a complex area. But New Zealand First position on matters of national security is clear and unequivocal. The government must ensure the safety of its citizens. We live in a world of threats, those which are known and some which are still unknown. We can't naively put our head in the sand. To ignore the threats posed by extremists and other anti-democratic groups would be nothing less than irresponsible. We can't be complacent that the terrorism will never be homegrown. And global terrorists do not respect international borders. On the other hand, New Zealand's civil liberties must not be undermined by this legislation. People, we think, are rightly concerned where the GCSB legislation is leading us, particularly in the light of the leaks and unauthorised disclosures that have been going on recently. New Zealand First is therefore seeking to put in place an effective watchdog that does not bite the very people it seeks to, pr to protect. So we have introduced an SOP in the name of Winston Peters that will create an independent panel to oversee the GCSB's information gathering activities. The advisory panel proposed uh, by the government to assist the Inspector General in SOP 306 is not enough, we think. The panel we propose would be, in, would be informed when an interception warrant or an access authorisation is issued under section 15A. The panel would be required to review the interception warrant or access authorisation within 15 working days. The panel would be made up of former members of the judiciary, the New Zealand Police and the New Zealand Defence Force because they must be independent of the police, judiciary or armed forces. The members of the panel would bring to their role an understanding and appreciation of the context of national security. They would be people with an appropriate background, good judgment and independence in the relevant areas of the operation of the security services. Our SOP provides a measure of safeguard a second string to the bow to avoid unfounded voyages of exploration on New Zealanders' privacy. Our proposal would ensure that the public could have confidence and trust in the GCSB despite its having wide-ranging powers. Our proposal strikes a reasonable balance to resolve a complex issue. It is a fair and practical solution to reconciling security with democratic rights and civil liberties. It would ensure that, G that the GCSB operates within the law and the panel we propose would be well equipped to see that it does. We believe in strong, clear law which empowers the GCSB appropriately but also provides for robust oversight and review procedures. Mr Chairman, in a perfect threat-free threat world, agencies such as the GCSB wouldn't be needed. But we don't live in such a world. We need agencies and structures to guard against threats to our security and national interests. But it is fundamental that the GCSB must operate in a fully professional manner to safeguard our rights and freedoms. As things stand, we can't support this legislation. We won't be a rubber stamp. We've put forward an SOP that provides a constructive way forward to assist the government to develop an appropriate legislative framework for the GCSB, but we must propose the bill. We must oppose the bill at this point. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. The Honourable Peter Dunn. Mr. Chairman, the one thing that most people agree about this bill 